We are still proving convergence properties for our subgradient algorithm. And in the last video, we were able to add the last point to our list of achievements, namely that um, we know that under these uh, four bullet points here, um, that the sequence Sn of subgradients is bounded. Um, what we're now dealing with is uh, how to exploit the function values here in our um, fundamental inequality. So to this end, let us uh, write down this fundamental inequality again. So um, by the inequality, and now we write it in the form that we add like the sum from uh, n plus 1 to infinity of these terms on both sides so that we get this um, this expression with n on and n plus 1 again. Okay, so, so by this inequality, uh, um, norm of x n plus 1 minus x bar uh, norm squared plus uh, this sum here, which we know is finite, um, if we go from n plus 1 to infinity, gamma k squared norm of sk squared um, is less or equal than, and here we have norm of x n minus x bar squared. Uh, then we have this here, so this is the sum of k from n to infinity, gamma k squared, norm of sk squared, minus 2 gamma n, f of x n minus f of x bar. So you should have seen this inequality previously. And now we have these, these terms here, which uh, we know the the only difference is uh, the only difference between them is that we have n plus one on the left hand side and n on the right hand side, and what we now uh, can do is we d just choose some n greater or equal than one, and what we, when we add this we have this term uh, when we add these inequalities for certain n. Uh, we notice that certain terms cancel out because they appear on both. So on the left hand side um, for the n plus 1 term and on the right hand side, no, on the left hand side for the n term and on the right hand side for the n plus 1 term, and they are the same and therefore um, uh, they cancel out because these are still just real numbers here, these things, because again we know that this sum here is uh, finite. Okay. So if we choose this and add the inequalities for n from, and now we have to start from 0, that's best. I mean, it does not really matter, but uh, just to have some fixed starting point, and let's say to capital N minus 1. Uh, what do we have then? So then we have this term um, where we have, where we start from 1, n plus 1 uh, is 1, 2, 3, and so on until we end up here. So this is capital N, the last term. And here we have the same term, but we start with n equals 0 and uh, only go to n equals capital N minus 1. And therefore, all the terms for n from 1 to capital N minus 1 appear both on the left hand side and on the right hand side and therefore we can just ignore them, they, they uh, cancel out. So what we then get is um, only the last term on the left hand side uh, remains, so this is the term with uh, capital N minus 1 instead of n, so x capital N minus x bar uh, norm squared plus, um, and again here, only the last term, sum of k from capital N to infinity, 
gamma k squared, norm of sk squared. And on the left hand side, this term, um, we, we only have the, the term for n equals zero, so the first one. So x zero minus x bar norm squared plus sum k from zero to infinity um, gamma k squared norm of sk squared. And uh, for, for the last term, we just have all the, the sum of all these um, differences of function values. So we have minus, yeah, the two is a common factor. And now we sum n from zero to capital N minus one, because that's the sum we are taking. And then we have gamma n f of x n minus f of x bar. Okay, so what we now have is that we have an expression uh, where we have this sum of, uh, or this weighted sum, weighted with these um, step sizes of the difference of function values at our iterates and at the solution. So this, these are um, always positive. And we know that we have this sum here and what we also know is that on the left hand side, um, the left hand side is just some expression which is positive because it's uh, sum of norms which are multiplied with some positive uh, factors. So we know that uh, the left hand side is greater or equal than zero. Okay, so then um, um, what we then can do is, well, we have this, we can put it on the left hand side, and this here does not depend on capital N, which is really great. Okay, so let's do this. So first of all, we can just um, divide by one half. This does not hurt. So we have the sum capital, uh, from N to capital N minus one of gamma N f of x n minus f of x bar. Okay, this is this thing, less or equal than, and again we divide it by one half. Uh, we we, di we div divide it by two, so we multiply with one half, sorry. Um, one half norm of x zero minus x bar squared plus sum of k from zero to infinity gamma k squared norm of sk squared. Okay, and we know that again this sum here is finite, so that's great. And we also know that the right hand side does not depend on capital N, which allows us to conclude that this sum here will be finite. Okay. Um, and, but actually we want to draw two conclusions from, from this uh, inequality here. So the first uh, I did already spoil, so let's uh, formulate, like, uh, formulate it like this. So the right hand side does not depend on capital N. Here, no capital N appears. So what we can then do, we can, we can, let, um, uh, we can let capital N go to infinity, and this does not appear, this does not change anything on the right hand side, but on the, on the left hand side we now get this infinite sum. So letting capital N go to infinity means that we, uh, we have this uh, series here and this shows that the series, uh, which consists of only uh, positive terms as we clarify because x bar is a minimizer of f, um, then uh, that we know that this is then less or equal than this constant, constant in terms of or with respect to capital N 
uh, on the right hand side. So letting capital N go, go to infinity uh, gives um, sum of n from 0 to cap, uh, not to capital N minus 1, of course, because we let capital N minus 1 go to infinity. Uh, instead, we take this infinite sum of gamma n f of x n minus f of x bar. And this will be less or equal than, I think I forgot one half here. Yes, sorry. <laughs> one half on, on both of the terms, or, yeah. Um... Uh, no brackets here. Um, so this is just the sum. It's, it's exactly this sum here. Yes. And this is just le uh, strictly less. This is just a, just some number. So less than plus infinity. Okay. So this sum is finite, which is um, a great achievement because, in particular, this means that um, this, uh, the, these summons here, these go to zero um, eventually. So whatever we sum up here has to go to zero in order for the sum to be finite. Um, okay, let's just so let's just write this down. In particular gamma n multiplied with this difference here um, goes to zero as n goes to infinity. Because if we sum, sum up uh, uh, some, any, any, any sequence of terms and this sum is finite, then the uh, sequence of summons so what, what we sum up goes to zero. That's a um, the theorem in, in like basic cause of, from the basic cause of analysis. Okay, so this is the, the first uh, very important result, uh, which we will use later. So with this we will add to our list of achievements. Um, okay, just this in a box. And the other result will be something which we can directly use to measure the performance of the algorithm. Um, so this is not just some auxiliary result which we will use later. This is actually something um, yeah, quite important to prove convergence or to, to, in, in, to, to get this convergence in practice. Um, so on the other hand, Um, we have this sum of this weighted sum of function value differences. So now um, you remember from your exercise the uh, Jensen's inequality, and Jensen's inequality tells us that um, that sum that a function value of a sum can be less or equal than the sum of these function values whenever these coefficients um, in front of them uh, sum up to 1. And now here, obviously, these gamma n's do not need to sum up to 1. But if we, if we divide the whole thing by the sum of gamma 0, gamma 1, until gamma n minus 1, then uh, these coefficients will add up to 1. Um, so, by dividing, dividing um, this inequality, um, yeah, let's just mark this with an exclamation mark. Um, so, dividing this by the sum of n 
equals 0 to n minus 1 gamma n. Again, this is a positive um, this is a positive number. This is just a finite sum, so we don't have to um, take care of, of anything here. So if we divide this by, by, um, uh, by this number, we get uh, sum And here I have the n, so I will probably use k here. Okay. So less or equal than, and now we. Uh, We have this, this one half factor in both of the terms. So uh, we have this. Um, yeah, and here we have norm of x zero minus x bar squared plus some. gamma k squared, norm of sk squared. Okay, let me draw some line here to separate the columns. Okay, so now we have, uh, notice by the way that we have gamma, gamma k squares here in this sum and only gamma k's in, in, in this sum. Um, this will also turn out very important later. And yeah, we have that these coefficients here um, sum up to one. So the sum of them, if you uh, if you just ignore this here, if you sum sum this up, then you will of course get uh, one. So now we can use Jensen's inequality. And we can uh, we can therefore um, put this sum inside the function value and here we, uh, for, for this f of x bar um, we, only, we, we have the, the same x bar everywhere so we have uh, the sum over gamma n uh, times x, f of x bar divided over the sum of gamma k with the same summation borders so this is just um, if if you sum up this uh, this of uh, and, and f of x bar, you get just get f of x bar. Um, also, since these um, coefficients uh, sum up to one, so by by Jensen's inequality, you get or we get f of, and now we have the whole sum inside. So this very sum just inside this f here. So we have uh, the sum of the the, the, the weighted sum of, of these iterates here, these x n uh, minus f of x bar less or equal than, and now just the the right hand side. So this by Jensen's inequality is less or equal than the left hand side. The, the right hand side is just unchanged. Um, so you have 1 over 2 sum gamma k and here x0 minus x bar squared plus sum gamma k squared norm of sk squared. Okay, and this bracket is closed. All right, and this is a very important achievement. So um, this tells us that 
uh, we can construct something from the first capital N, um, yeah, or capital N or capital N minus, so from iterate zero to capital N minus one, which are N uh, points. So we, we have the this weighted sum, this kind of mean value of, of these uh, things. And if you evaluate the function there, then you get some, you get some bound for the difference to the optimum, which is very good because now we see we have this here, we have the, this fixed thing. This just determines where you start your, uh, your algorithm, x0 minus x bar, and how far you are from the solution. And the second term is just this finite thing here, which we assume to be finite. And you divide it by the sum of gamma k. And now if the sum of gamma k is um, infinite, um, notice the sum of gamma k squared norm of sk squared is finite, but still the sum of gamma k without the squares can be infinite, then um, the, the right-hand side will go to zero. And this is, uh, uh, this is actually what we will assume in the future. So first let us state that uh, this is uh, a so-called ergodic uh, convergence rate and yeah. ergodic here means that you take these uh, mean values so you don't take f of xn as we ha had here but you take f of some weighted sum of of your xn so this is um, slightly weaker so you know that uh, whenever uh, these uh, xn converges to something then their um, their means uh, also convert to the same uh, value but uh, with the but uh, not the other way around so if you have the the so for example if xn were to be like one minus one one minus one and so on then the mean values would um, if you have like uh, equal weights, then the mean values converge to zero, but the sum itself does not converge at all. Okay, so this convergence rate is weaker than a convergence rate for the iterates itself, but it is a convergence rate, and you can actually use these, uh, just evaluate your function at, or, or keep track in your algorithm of these um, values here, and um, you, you, you might get the guarantee, or you get the guarantee how bad you can do depending on where you started and how you chose your um, gamma k squared. Okay, so this is an ergodic convergence rate. And as I mentioned, you want uh, the sum of these gamma k's, um, which is the, the factor here on the, on the left hand side, you want this to go to infinity as capital N goes to infinity. So, and actually you have, you, 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 you see that also a bit here. Um, if you, if, if so from the, um, from this here, so you want to, you want to somehow not, um, you, you don't want to, to have, you don't want to let this gamma n converge too fast so that this can still be like ba uh, be greater than epsilon everywhere and the, and the sum still converges. Okay, so um, this motivates um, our next, our, our final um, uh, assumptions on the step sizes. So this motivates the assumption that we want uh, the sum of k from zero, uh, zero to infinity of gamma k to be plus infinity, okay? And in the, so the, the results we, we have stated here do not depend on, on this assumption, but um, our, our forthcoming results on the uh, convergence of this algorithm will depend on on this. 
Um, so this uh, concludes this video and I will add our achievement and our new assumption to this list and then we can uh, we can uh, have a look at these iterates and that these iterates under some uh, under these assumptions converge to a solution of uh, or to a minimizer of, of the function to a solution of the minimization problem.